There is no doubt whatsoever that the immense majority of citizens would like to see man and his world continue, but with conditions which in reality would result in aggravating the financial situation. The various possible formulas, therefore, need not be retained. If any one of them could have produced the financial guarantee needed for a favorable balance in 1969, rest assured that we would have adopted it with pleasure. Our conscience is clear of having done everything possible in order to avoid the painful decision of closing man and his world. I wish it clearly understood that I agree with the decision of the Executive Committee because, like every other one of my colleagues, faced with the largely dominant opinion of the taxpayers, no other decision could be taken. I wish to avoid embarrassing public speculation about my role, and that is why I am presently raising the issue. And I will say without ambiguity that in the new climate, equivalent to a sort of curfew or a form of austerity, which can become very severe, I find it very difficult to see myself continuing, even in part, to exercise the function. I now have to find. Wishing to avoid a decision, whatever it is, which some might say was taken too suddenly and under the spell of emotion, or that it is evidence of a desire to unduly hang on to the honors of the job, I intend during the coming week to give this question the time for the reflection needed in order to arrive at the answer which will best serve the interest of our students. Consequent to the statement by the chairman of the city executive committee concerning the closing of man and his world, I am convinced that my reaction will be questioned. Here it is. As a member of the executive committee, I remain solidary with the decision. As mayor of Montreal, elected by the voters at large, I must say that public opinion, as formulated by press, radio, and television editorial writers, and by the numerous public opinion polls, which I am aware of, does not allow reaching a different conclusion. An immense majority of Montreal taxpayers are unwilling to maintain man and his world if, in order to succeed, it is necessary to use public funds and consequently risk the tax increase. Our financial forecasts for last year were misled by a series of unfortunate events, which I need not recall here, but which were independent of our will. Furthermore, what stems directly from us and I, of course, include the direction and staff of Man in His World, namely the success and excellence of the general presentation and overall organization, the Chief and Go One. On the contrary, they agreeably surprised the severest critics and made Man in His World one of the world's most outstanding tourist attractions. Nevertheless, this success does not seem adequate in itself to modify the views of the taxpayers, and it is their unquestionable right to demonstrate how they wish for the funds to be used. The strictly economic nature have not expected our attention. They go so far as to give me genuine concern. But a Montreal taxpayer by himself can no longer sustain the economic activity of the province and of the country. Furthermore, it must be admitted that this general feeling commands other measures, equally painful, even if this happens at various degrees. The city of Montreal will therefore 
have to receive a clearly different kind of administration from the beneficial movement the Civic Party of Montreal has succeeded in imprinting it with during the past three years, and this with general public consent. Fortunately, however, I am certain that the Civic Party will succeed in formulating and in applying this new kind of administration as imposed by the typical circumstances to which cities are being subjected to for as long as will last the fiscal and constitutional shock, the duration of which is not for me to determine. I am certain that this is also the conviction of the immense majority of observers and of all taxpayers. And it must be cause for satisfaction to all those who have the interest of the city of Montreal at heart to know that the Civic Party of Montreal has administrators who are not only concerned with this situation, but who are also capable of facing it until better times arrive. In the few climate, it will henceforth condition municipal action. One is perfectly justified in certain circles to wonder about my own personal role. Identified with a public image consisting mainly of boldness, of a man with a dream and of challenges, I will undoubtedly appear to most as a gag man who is suddenly dispossessed of the item, item instrumental for the success of the performance. As on staying in office, I will have to convince myself of the utility of the role that I can still play in the new life. The question is important, and in announcing the conclusion to which I will come, I will, at that time, elaborate on the subject as well. For the time being, let it be recalled that when I offered to serve, I had the conviction of being used my own manner and style. Towards this end, and with a remarkable piece 